In the last video, there were quite a few comments and some really good questions. There were also people saying, Reed, why are you using presence detection? It's not accurate at all. So I wanted to answer a bunch of your questions in this video, as well as explain how I'm using presence detection because I'm doing some really cool stuff. And maybe after you see how I'm using it, you might be a believer or maybe not. So the top comment in the video was from E-Rock and they said, I'm excited to apply this to track my cat. She loves finding new hiding spots and it would be fun to see which room she's in. And right when I saw this, I immediately went to Amazon and bought a tracker for Luna. And the one I got works really well because there's loops on each side. So it was really easy to attach to her collar and it was on the outside part of her collar. So Luna really doesn't even notice it, even though it is slightly big, but the battery life is four years, so it should last a really long time. It wasn't picking her up in every single room because the power it was giving off was a little bit low, but you can use the app and up that power and that seemed to fix it, even though that might make the battery life reduced just a little bit, but it's pretty sweet. I also saw some comments about the 3D printed case for the ESP32. They couldn't make it or they couldn't find where to buy them. Well, you can buy ESP32s with a case already built on for a few dollars more, and I'll link those down below. They're actually smaller. I haven't tried them myself, but people say they work well. A lot of people are asking if it works with Apple's AirTags, and unfortunately, it does not work with AirTags. There's a whole list of things it works with and does not work with, and I'll link it down below. You can get some little Bluetooth trackers similar to what I put on Luna, but yeah, it's just annoying. The biggest concern with room presence detection using Bluetooth is always carrying a device with you, and it's a valid concern. So I created something that makes it so much more convenient. I'm mainly using my iPhone to track my Bluetooth presence around my house because it's the most accurate, but I don't always wanna carry my phone with me. Sometimes I like to take a break from my phone. So when I put it down and put it on the charger, my smart home automatically switches over and starts tracking my Apple Watch. And it works so seamlessly because I have an Apple shortcut on my iPhone. And right when I plug it into power, it calls a home assistant automation. And then it makes that switch over. And there's some stuff going on in the background using a template sensor. And I'll get into that at the end because it's a little more technical. But this works so well. And it pretty much solves that problem because I either have my phone on me or my Apple Watch for notifications. So problem solved. Another major concern people have with room presence detection that I saw in the comments is accuracy. And this is a valid concern because when I first started setting it up, I ran into this issue as well. But there are a few things you can do to really improve it. So if you're using an Apple device, I mentioned that you can get the Bluetooth ID by holding it near an ESP device and getting the Bluetooth ID that way. But the way better way is to get the IRK number. Not only will it not change or randomize the Bluetooth ID, but for some reason, it makes it way more accurate. Once I got the IRK number for my iPhone and updated the ESP presence with it, it just made it so good. Like it, my iPhone is extremely accurate now. So it took about 15 minutes to get all the IRK numbers and I'll link some articles on how to do that down in the description. Another thing you can do is move the ESP device off the ground for less interference. I had my ESP device in my bedroom on the ground and it wasn't really picking up my wife's phone just like, you know, maybe five feet away. Once I put it on my nightstand, it worked perfectly. So if you want less interference and better accuracy and all of that, make sure you move it up off the ground and use the IRK number if you're using Apple devices. And then there's a last concern with room presence detection and it's why would you use this in the first place? It's kind of slow to update with Bluetooth and all of that. There's better sensors out there like PIR sensors that are faster, millimeter wave that are a little more accurate. And I made my main channel video about using my HVAC system and automating it using a mixture of millimeter wave and this room presence. And I think that's the best of both worlds because millimeter wave on its own, it can't tell who's in the room and it can only cover a certain zone, like a certain area, a room. And it's very difficult to put them all over your entire house where room presence can cover a large area. And sure, it might not be pinpoint accurate like millimeter wave is, but combining the two, 
you can do so much more. So it's not the only sensor that I use, but I use it in conjunction with the other sensors in my smart home. All right, now for the juicy technical stuff. If you're still sticking around, you're brave and good job to you. But this stuff is so much fun. Like template sensors and home assistant, woo, doesn't get much better than that. So what it is, is you're creating kind of like a virtual sensor. It kind of works as like if you've used like virtual Boolean switches and everything, but it's a little more intense because you're adding logic to the sensor. And let me give you an example of how this works with my HVAC system. So with room presence detection, I have, I think there's seven rooms and I combine it into three different HVAC zones. So if I were creating automations for every single one of those rooms, like if I'm in this room or that room and that it would get complicated and I'd probably make some mistakes and it would take a long time to make all those automations. But instead I made a template sensor to handle like the heavy lifting and then it never changes. And then I can make really simple automations. So let, let me explain, let me show you some of this stuff. So for the template sensor, it's basically three if statements. So if my phone is in one of the rooms, then it will set it to HVAC master bedroom, HVAC kitchen, or HVAC bedrooms. Those are my three HVAC zones. Depending on which room I'm in, I'm in one of those three zones. Then I can just have the automation say, if the HVAC bedrooms is left, if read left the HVAC bedrooms, then turn the HVAC bedrooms thermostat back to warm or back to normal. That's all you have to do because I don't have to check all the different rooms or whatever. This template sensor is doing all that work for me. And the other one that I'm using it for is what I mentioned earlier. If my phone is on the charger, then it will switch over to my Apple Watch. The way that that works, there's an if statement. If my charging is on, that's just an input Boolean that turns on when the Apple shortcut triggers that automation. I have another check to make sure my phone, it has to be connected to an ESP device. And the reason for that is because if I left my watch, my Apple Watch at home, I took my phone in the car and I put it on the charger in the car, then my the smart home would think, oh, use the Apple Watch location and now I'm in the bedroom or whatever, even though I'm in the car away from the house. This read current room sensor, this template sensor that I created, I always use that for my location. So I don't have to worry about if it's my watch or my phone or whatever. I just always use this template sensor. And then the next template sensor uses the output of the previous one. Anyways, I had a lot of fun setting up all of these automations and I know these were a little bit technical, extremely technical. I have some more basic automations I'm gonna be doing as well. So make sure you keep an eye out for those automation videos and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.